I'll start by um, drawing a heart because obviously the, the arterial supply has to start from the, uh, the heart. This, okay, I'm just gonna draw a basic heart. You can see the four chambers. This is not really about the heart. This is about the blood supply to the brain. Okay, and you have this big blood vessel coming out, the aorta. And from that you have the right brachiocephalic trunk left common carotid artery and the, the left subclavian under the, the right brachiocephalic trunk divides into two again to form the right right subclavian artery and the right common carotid artery so you have these um, two common carotid arteries I send up like this and that and these basically supply the common carotid arteries supply blood to almost all of your head and neck and at the C4 vertebral level these bifurcate to form the external carotid arteries and the internal carotid arteries right okay and the internal carotid arteries travel all the way up to the skull and then they form a part of the circle of villus so the two main arteries that you will be talk about in the circle of villus are the internal carotid artery internal carotid artery and the vertebral artery I'll, I'll show you in a minute where the vertebral artery comes out of so from the right and left right and left subclavian arteries we have two branches coming up the vertebral artery and this artery actually goes through foramen transitorium of the cervical vertebrae of c1 to c6 I'll just draw a simple diagram of a um, cervical vertebra for you to get the idea of what the foramen transitorium is if you don't know that already. Okay. It is basically the foramen that you see in the transverse process of the vertebrae of C1 to C6. Cervical vertebra. This is the body and this. The vertebral arteries travel and then you have the internal carotid artery and the vertebra artery all right now that we have now that you know where each of these main vessels come out of from the heart from the aorta all the way up to the head vertebral arteries on each side they come together they come together like this to form the basilar artery one they form one common artery called the basilar artery right I'll just erase these a bit from here before they join each other to form the basilar artery it gives two arteries and that's anterior inferior cerebellar artery it gives off anterior spinal artery and also the posterior spinal artery from either side and anterior spinal artery and what do you call this basilar artery Fontaine artery you have small arteries like this they come out of this called pontine arteries so let me just label that real quick pontine artery. and this basilar artery again at the end of it it gives two other branches and from here you have two arteries coming off the posterior inferior cerebellar artery the pica as you may say and and this artery that i just drew that is the superior cerebellar artery on either side and then right after that it gives another two branches and these sub, these are the posterior cerebral arteries. These are two big branches. This is and this is like the terminal main branch of the vertebral artery. It ends in the posterior cerebral artery. Let me just label that real quick. Posterior cerebral artery. I really do apologize in advance if you can't read my handwriting. 
but if you guys are going to be doctors you're going to have to get used to these kind of handwriting it is literally called the doctor's handwriting let's just um pause there and go back to the internal carried artery these internal carried arteries travel all the way up these travel within the carotid sheath um as you remember the vertebral arteries they traveled on the um in the foramen transversarium or c1 c6 vertebrae the internal carotid artery travels in the carotid sheath and it enters the cranium through the carotid canal this is um formed by part of the sphenoid bone and now you have the internal carotid artery in the brain and somewhere around here it gives a bunch of branches so the main one being the middle cerebral artery the middle cerebral artery supplies a majority of the the lateral aspect of the the cerebrum most of the cerebral cortex is supplied by the middle cerebral artery the middle cerebral artery and there is a communicating artery that communicates between the middle cerebral artery and the posterior cerebral artery okay and that artery is called the posterior communicating artery okay. posterior communicating artery and we have one on the other side as well of course yeah and then before the internal carotid artery gives off these branches it gives another branch from the inside called the ophthalmic artery and as the name suggests this of this is applies your eyes and then right after giving the middle sorry um, the posterior communicating artery gives off a branch over here on either side and that's called the anterior cordial artery and it supplies a um, bunch of deep structures within the brain which i which i don't have the time to cover within this live anterior cordial artery and then you have another branch another big branch that supplies the cerebrum called the anterior cerebral artery given off over here and they join together the middle they don't exactly join together they are all separate but they come closer and over here you have something called the anterior communicating artery similar to the posterior communicating artery you had over here and this is called anterior communicating artery all right and these small branches over here yep and the main branch this one this is called anterior cerebral artery and there you go that is basic that basically sums up the circle of willis got rid of the brain now you can get like an overview of the circle of willis to be more precise let me just show you all right yep let me just show you what exactly the artery uh, the circle of willis is so i drew a bunch of branches and branch of arteries but which one like what makes up the the circle of willis and that's what this video is really about so let me just change colors a bit and show you let me just get a yellow color yep yellow color seems good what i'm coloring right now this makes up circle of willis and then now that i've um, taught you what the what each branch and with each artery is if you get a question like what are the arteries that make up the um, circle of willis now you know the answer it's the what is it let me just uh, get another color again posterior communicating artery anterior 
cerebral artery, the, the first part of it at least, the anterior communicating artery, and posterior cerebral artery. And that makes up the circle of Willis. Alright, now that we've got that out of the way, let me give you an overview of which which of these arteries, which of these main arteries, right? We have we have um, the anterior cerebral artery. Okay, the posterior cerebral artery and the medial cerebral artery. And which of these supply which parts of the brain? We need to find that out. So let's just get into it. Let me pull up another diagram. I color this in green. Okay, which part of the? Okay, this is a diagram of the lateral aspect of the brain, and I'll just color which parts of the brain that are supplied by the middle cerebral artery. This whole area is covered, supplied by the middle cerebral artery. All right, the middle cerebral artery, and then. You have the anterior cerebral artery. Okay, a part of the, the superior part of the temporal bone is also supplied by the middle cerebral artery. So I'll just label this real quick: middle cerebral artery. This whole area is supplied by the anterior cerebral artery. Most supplies are the anterior medial aspect. Where the middle cerebral artery supplies. The anterolateral aspect of the brain. So let me just label this real quick. Let's get down to it. The last one, the last but not least, I'll choose green for, uh, I'll choose blue for this. I already used green. All right. The posterior cerebral artery. It obviously supplies the posterior surface of the brain and a part of the inferior part of the temporal lobe of the brain. And also Posterior cerebral. Um, let's take a look at the um, sagittal section of the brain. So you can see the internal blood supply. Now you're seeing um, almost a superficial view of the brain. Let me just um, get you down to uh, a sagittal section of the brain so you can look at the blood supply there. This is a sagittal section of the brain, and as you can see, if you know your neuroanatomy, you'd know that this, uh, what all these structures are. But I'm not going to go into detail. Let's start with the posterior cerebral line. And just a quick reminder guys, if you are watching, make sure to subscribe. It gives you an alert on the screen. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the like button. And also I have all my social media down in the description box. And also if you find the, uh, if you check the description box, you will see there is a link for donations. And if you give donations, that will also appear on the screen. So if you want to check out that feature, be sure to um, check out the donation feature by donating some money to me. So I can, um, like Manny will definitely help me grow the channel. Ooh, anonymous. Very thankful, very grateful to you. Um, thank you for that. So yeah, as you can see, the donation feature works. If more of you want to get your name down on the stream, you can try that feature. Alrighty. Back to the topic of blood supply of the brain in the sagittal section. So if you look at the sagittal section of the brain, let me um, use blue again for the posterior cerebral artery supply. Um, this whole part of the brain, okay, the occipital lobe, that in this entire part is supplied, and a part here, a part over here, supplied by the posterior cerebral artery. All right. And let me change color real quick. This whole area, the frontal cortex, the parietal, frontal lobe, and the parietal lobe. You can't actually see a lot of supply of the media, uh, the middle cerebral artery, from the sagittal section. So you can only see a little bit over here that's supplied by the middle cerebral artery. So let me label these real quick so that, I do, that you don't get um, confused. Middle. Cerebral. Oops. 
artery. This is posterior cerebral artery. And, uh, and the last one. I don't remember what color I used for this, but I'm gonna go with um, orange. Okay, so like I told you, the anterior cerebral artery has um, the majority of the inner surface, the, the middle. Oh, by the way, Sandaru, thanks a lot for donation. I really appreciate it. This will definitely help me grow the channel. All right, and I'm back to the topic of the middle portion. The anterior cerebral artery supplies a majority of the anterior aspect. So, oops, I had not changed the color. I said orange, right? Okay. This whole area supplied by the anterior cerebral artery. So, like in the previous diagram, let me show you a quick snap, real quick. Quick snap of the lateral aspect of the brain. As you can see, the middle cerebral artery um, supplies a majority of it, of the lateral uh, aspect of the brain and the cortex. The, it supplies the anterior lateral aspect of the brain. And if you go back to the, the sagittal section, the medial aspect of the brain, you can see majority of it supplied by the anterior cerebral Clinicals for you. Clinicals. Yes. What's the main thing that you uh, that you come across when you talk about the blood supply of the brain? What's the main problem that you come across? It's a stroke. So, as you know, it's one of the most common causes of um, death, a stroke. And there are four main ways that this can happen. It can happen because of um, can happen because of a. Um, Hypoperfusion, that means de um, decreased perfusion. Perfusion. And this is basically um, a systemic uh, blood pressure drop. So the entire systemic circulation is not functioning, that's low systemic um, circulation. And another reason for a stroke would be um, a thrombosis. So within the arteries of the Brain, the artery that we talked about in the circle of villis, it most commonly occurs in the circle of villis, a thrombosis. Thrombosis. It's basically a blood clot that happens within the um, circle of villis or the um, successive branches that are supplying the brain. And another reason for it could be an em embolism. As you, as you heard, like pulmonary embolism, um, and a thrombosis that occurs in your neck could easily um, break off and lodge within an artery that supplies the brain. And, and contrasting to the blood supply of the neck, the brain is actually very sensitive to, uh, to oxygen supply. It actually takes up um, about one fifth of the body's oxygen supply on um, a normal basis and um, it's very sensitive to the oxygen concentration so um, other like contrasting to the neck if you lose blood supply to your um, your brain the damage could be uh, much more and the last one and this is interesting one is a hemorrhage Both one hemorrhage and hemorrhage is an accumulation of blood within the cranial cavity so out of these four the most common cause of uh, cause of a stroke is embolism so this one is the main one and uh, hemorrhage is as I told you an accumulation of blood within the cranial cavity so if you if you get a damage to one of the arteries right you have an artery and if something breaks over here the blood could easily leak out and where does it leak out it leaks out into the it could leak out into the um, subarachnoid space and cause uh, increasing intracranial pressure and then they said to give off a thundering headache not like the headache that you and i get usually a thundering headache like the person who would get that headache would, would just scream with the, holding their head and just drop down to the ground it would be that painful so that's some interesting clinicals for you and I'm not done yet 
another thing that uh, another problem that you come across in the arterial circulation of the, the arterial blood supply to the brain is the um, intracerebral aneurysms so these are um, like commonly known as ticking time bombs because these aneurysms basically do not show any symptoms at all right you can you could be walking around anywhere with aneurysm and some of them would never know until they die and one day this aneurysm would rupture so an aneurysm is basically a dilation of the let me just erase this real quick right draw another blood, blood vessel yeah so it an aneurysm is a dilation of the artery more than 50% of its original length so this this occurs due to um, a structural defect in the walls of the artery and and usually when you get aneurysms in other parts of the body if you can palpate the artery you will get um, a pulsating lump like for example if you get a popliteal artery aneurysm you can see um, a pulsating lump on the back of your uh, knee so but inside the brain none of this is visible um, like commonly you might get um, a headache maybe and that's it the people who have this um, are basically running on a ticking time bomb you never know when they would rupture and when they do rupture they are lethal you could die and when you find out there's an aneurysm you have the option of um, in most cases of um, surgical intervention and you can treat the aneurysm uh, basically uh, the rupture of the aneurysm can cause a hemorrhage right mm. Once the arterial wall has ruptured, it is a medical emergency and the patient is likely to die unless treated swiftly. And the treatment is always, as I told you, surgical. I hope all of you enjoyed this video and learned something. Thank you for watching.